Hey there, this is Morgan with Morgan Burke's Photography and Product Shop. And today I'm going to show you how to blur a sky overlay to match the depth of field in the photo that you're working with. So in this one, you'll notice that my subjects are in focus and the background behind them is blurry. So today I'm going to show you how to take the texture out of the sky and sort of make it match the amount of blur in the background of your photo. So first things first, we're gonna put the sky overlay onto the image. And there's a couple ways to do that. So I'm gonna show you um, one way first and then I'll, I'll change it up and show you a second way. Okay, so this is the sky uh, that we're gonna use today it's from the Cinematic Skies collection. Um, how I opened this one is just went to File, Open, browsed for it, and then pulled it up just like I would open a regular photo in Photoshop. Um, and what you're gonna do is you're gonna grab your move tool, which is this crosshair arrow key over here. You're just gonna click right in the center of your sky and then drag it over with your mouse button still held down onto your image. And once your mouse has that little plus sign on it, then you can let it go and it will apply to your photo. So if you get a little notification, just hit yes and then it will pull up here on your photo. Okay, so I'm going to show you today how to apply a blur to the sky and use what's called smart objects to do it. So first thing you need to do is convert this layer in your photo to a smart object. Now if this sounds very technical, uh, don't worry, I'm gonna touch on it a little more later. But what you do to convert it into a smart object is just right click on the sky layer, right click it and hit convert to smart object, easy peasy. It just takes a little, uh, a little time for it to convert to the smart object takes you know less than a minute but it still seems like a long time especially when you're recording a tutorial here uh, but bear with me okay it's done um, so here you'll notice that this little icon on the bottom of your layer shows you that now this is a smart a smart object um, so again we'll touch on what that means in just a second but um, another way to add a sky I'm just gonna go ahead and delete this now is to go to file place here in Photoshop CC it's called place embedded um, so I'm just gonna use that Okay, and then it'll pull up your panel. You find the sky you wanna use. Again, I'm using Cinematic Blue 5 from the Cinematic Skies collection, and I'm just going to hit place once I've got it selected. And this pulls it directly up onto your photo, and it even has the little bounding box, so you can stretch and adjust your photo um, or your sky as necessary. Um, and then you just hit the check mark when you're finished. Okay, so this, as you'll notice, if you look over here, your icon is already a smart object. So you don't have to convert it here. If you use file place or file place embedded, it's automatically a smart object. So it saves you a little bit of time. Um, however, if you have a lot of images that you wanna edit um, and it's easier for you to just have the sky pulled up here and drag and drop, you're more than welcome. Um, and then you can convert to smart object if you'd like. So I find it's a little bit easier just to do file place. It's already converted for me, um, simple. Okay, so first things first, uh, before we get started with the blur, I'm going to make this sky react to my photo, that might be a weird word to use, but basically I'm going to change the blend mode, <clears throat> excuse me, so that it blends with the photo. You can see that the sky is showing through her hair. Um, it just, it kind of makes your job easier. You don't have to do as much work when you put it in multiply blend mode. Okay, so from there, what I wanna do is I'm gonna add a layer mask to my sky. And I'm just gonna do that by hitting this little rectangle button with the circle inside at the bottom of my layers panel. And I'm gonna grab a black paintbrush and here I am using a very soft brush, so the edges are very soft. Um, and my opacity here is at 20%. I actually think I'm gonna use an opacity more at about 60%. So I'm just gonna hit the six on my keyboard to change that quickly. Okay, so now I'm using the right bracket key. Um, it's near your backspace key on the other side of the letter P, and it just makes your, your brush bigger. And the right bracket key, or sorry, the right bracket key makes it bigger, left bracket makes it smaller. Okay, so. I'm just gonna sweep this over the bottom of my photo where I wanna remove the sky. And I'm just gonna take very good care not to go too close to the horizon here. Um, and then you can make your brush smaller to remove it from your subjects. And then even smaller, because I notice a little texture here on her hand, I'm just gonna remove that. Um, and then you can take it off the mountains over here too. So feel free to adjust your opacity as you go based on what you're removing it from or whatever. Okay, so I'm just gonna remove a little bit more and I just wanna make sure that I go over their faces enough times that they're completely uncovered from the sky. Um, but again, this is just a quick uh, selection here because I'm gonna apply the blur. And with a layer mask, you can always go back and tweak it later, add more or remove it as needed. So what I'm going to do here is since I was using the layer mask, it's the one that's selected over here. So in order to apply the blur, I wanna make sure that my sky is clicked. 
I don't want to blur the layer mask adjustment. I want to blur the sky itself. So um, just make sure that this is clicked. And then you're going to go to Filter, Blur, Gaussian Blur. Now, if you have a different blur that you prefer, feel free. Um, they all sort of do similar things. So if you have one that you really like, um, feel free to use it. It doesn't have to be Gaussian Blur. It's up to you. Okay, so here, um, if you want, it's not always, the radius is basically set to the last, the, the one that you use last. So if I blurred something before, it's still set to that radius. Uh, so here, you can just start low and then sort of blur it and keep going until it matches your photo. So basically what I'm paying attention to here is this plant that's in the background closest to them. Um, the edges of it are not crisp, they're not clear at all, but the, it still has a little bit of detail. It's not entirely blurry to where it's just, you know, green color and you can't really tell what it is. I hope this is making sense. Um, but basically, if the edges of this plant are blurry, the edges of the skies or the, or the clouds should be blurry too. So basically that's what I'm looking at. I just want to make sure that the sky is blurred enough that it matches the blurriness of that plant. And this is not an exact science. It's pretty much up to your eyeballs what you think. Um, and you can slide this and just adjust it See, you know, and see what works best for each image. Uh, depending on how close you are to your subject or what lens you're using, you might use more or less blur um, in certain photos than in others. So it's not always the same number. Just feel free to adjust it to match the photo. Okay, so I think this actually looks pretty good. Uh, there's no texture in the sky um, as far as the edges of the clouds, but you can still kind of see some cloud detail, if that makes sense. You can see that there's clouds up there. It's not just, you know, solid color completely blurred out. Um, so I'm just gonna hit okay once I'm satisfied. And as you'll notice, this pops up here as a little adjustment under the Smart Filters panel. And this is pretty cool. If you're not familiar with Smart Objects, uh, this makes your life so much easier. Basically, you can turn that blur on and off now. You can kind of see it um, in comparison to your photo. You can kind of see what you think. Let it sit in for a while, keep editing your photo, and then if you need to, you can go back and adjust it. And it's super easy to do. All you have to do is right click, I mean double click, I'm sorry, right where it says Gaussian Blur. I'm gonna cancel that. So I'm just gonna double click right where it says Gaussian Blur, and it'll pull that panel right back up. So if I want a tiny bit more blur, I can just move it over, or maybe it's too much, I can turn it down, and hit OK. And then you don't have to go all the way back to Filter Blur, Gaussian Blur, and do a little more. It pulls it right up right there. Okay, now if you ever had a need, there's also a layer mask here so that you could remove that blur from somewhere in the photo using that layer mask. Um, on certain images, that might be something you'd wanna do. In this one, I don't. Um, the background is all pretty blurry. There's no part of the background that's, that's super in focus, so I don't really think that any part of my sky should be. So I'm just gonna leave it all, but there is a layer mask there if you want to use it. Um, one other thing I want to touch on um, is that sometimes when using Gaussian Blur on your photo or on a sky overlay, depending on how much you blur, you might notice some banding in your photo. Um, if you're not familiar with what that means, it's basically an inconsistency in the pixels. You've smoothed them, that smoothed, excuse me, smoothed them a little too much, um, and it causes some weird issues with the pixels, and it just it looks a little funny. So if you notice that happening, um, you don't need to blur more. What you need to do is add a little bit of noise um, or grain, if you will. So what I'm going to do here is my sky layer is still selected, and that's what I want. I'm going to go to Filter, and I'm going to go to Noise, Add Noise. And so here, I just want to add a tiny bit, a, a tiny bit of noise. So 0.9 actually works pretty good. Um, you might want to zoom in here just to make sure that the noise matches the rest of your photo, get super technical. Um, here I, I've zoomed into the photo and I know exactly, um, you know, you can kind of see here, it'll show you a 100% window. But I am familiar with this photo, I've edited it before, um, so it only needed a little bit of grain. This isn't an overly grainy photo. Um, if yours was, or if you like grain in your image, feel free to add a little more if that's if that's your preference. So here I just want to add just enough to match the the grain in the photo. And as much as you as much as you try, all photos will have some grain. So if you just want to add the bare minimum, you can, and then you can hit OK. And what this does is it adds it right on top of that Gaussian blur. So you again you can zoom in, and you can. It's sh grain shows up a little easier in the darker spots. So you can zoom into this part of your sky and you can kind of see the grain. Um, and if you can't, you can turn it on and off and see what it's doing. So if you still notice that there's some banding, um, again, you can just double click right where it says add noise and this will pull it up and allow you to do a little bit more. 
So here, if 0.9 was too much, maybe you want to go to 0.85 or 0.8 uh, and then hit OK. And that will just adjust it a little bit for you. So I hope that made some sense. Basically, Smart Object is awesome. You can just come over here, double click these, make quick tweaks. Um, let's say that you went on and you edited this photo and you were zoomed in or something and you realized the blur didn't really match. Um, you can always go back and adjust it. So it makes your life easier. You don't have to start over, start fresh. Um, yeah, super quick, super simple. Um, so one other thing that I wanna talk about, I feel like I keep saying that, so maybe two other things. Uh, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you, here we've added a sky that's a little bit darker. And our foreground, the, the ground, has some brightness to it. So if we were adding this dark sky, or if you know this dark sky was really out there when we were taking this picture of our subjects, um, the ground might be a little bit darker. So if you wanted to, to make more changes to your photo to make the sky a little bit more believable, you can adjust the darkness of your photo to match the sky. So that's what I'm gonna do here. I'm just gonna show you really quick. Um, so this circle button at the bottom of your layers panel, um, you're just gonna click that, and I'm gonna use levels. But basically what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab this center slider, this is the midtones, and I'm just gonna drag it to the right, which darkens up a little bit. Um, so once I've done that, you'll notice it darkens your whole photo, uh, but I'm gonna use the layer mask here to adjust and just make sure it only applies to the foreground. So what I'm going to do is when the layer mask is white, it shows that adjustment that you just made. So I'm going to hit Control I on, or Command I if you're on a Mac and hit Control I on my keyboard. And what that does is it fills the layer mask with black so that that adjustment that you just made, that darkness, doesn't show. If you look right here, you can see that it's still turned down. It's still 0.85 where we put it. You just can't see it on the photo because the layer mask is black. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna grab your brush, set your color to white to reveal that adjustment onto your photo. So here I'm gonna put my opacity at 20% by hitting the two on my keyboard. And I'm just gonna add some of this darkness. You can raise it up to 40% if you want. Hit the four on my keyboard to do that. And you just paint this darkness into your photo um, to make it match the darkness of the sky. So it looks a little more believable. If you want, you can sweep some of this over your subjects. Um, you can even add a little bit more darkness to the sky if you want. So this is up to you. It just allows you to kind of blend in and look a little more cohesive together. You don't want your ground to be too dark, I mean too bright if the sky is dark. So that'll allow you to make some adjustments there. So we've blurred the sky and we've added some noise to counteract too much blurring and we've darkened the foreground to match as well. So if you'll hold down your Alt key or option if you're on a Mac, you can hit the little eyeball on your background layer and turn those on and off and see that your changes that you've made. So if you notice any inconsistencies or anything that's not perfect, you can always double click either of these and adjust them. Um, and that's the beauty of smart objects. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you have any questions, you can shoot me an email at morgan at morganburks.com or you can find me on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash morganburksphotography. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great day.